Welcome back to Uncover Your Magic. Today, I have the absolute honor to have a conversation with the one and only Belinda Womack. Throughout this podcast journey of mine, I've had a top 10 wish list for guests to have on the show. Belinda Womack is one of those, and I am beyond grateful to share this incredible woman with you and let you hear for yourself why I'm so passionate about her message and what she does on this earth to allow us to go deeper and realize how guided and protected and surrounded by our angels and guides we are. Her story is profound and made me look deeper and uncover more of why we are here. And to remember, there is always angels surrounding us, waiting for us to ask them for help and guidance. My relationship with my angels has been transformational after reading Belinda's book, Lessons from the 12 Archangels, Divine Intervention in Daily Life. This book was the book of the year for me. I gave it out at Christmas to my family and friends, and like me, they couldn't put it down. She was also mentioned in episode 90 with Shane Braverman. She mentored Shane as a teenager and changed her life. If you haven't listened to that episode yet, go back and listen. It's a beautiful conversation. Okay. Let me tell you about Belinda before I bring her on. As a child, Belinda communicated with angels and loving beings in heaven. However, when she turned 12, she turned off her special heavenly radio receiver and just decided to become a scientist. She did all she could to rely on the logical and rational part of her brain and earned two master's degrees, one in microbiology and one in environmental science. All of her effort to be practical and rely on tangible evidence was blown away on the day while working in a pediatric oncology lab, Archangel Gabriel visited her and changed all she believed she knew about herself and life on earth. Belinda loves to work with the 12 archangels and ascended masters to relay their transformational and deepest healing messages through personal consultations, channeled readings, online classes, and live webinars. If you have been a loyal listener to the show over the past few months, you'll have noticed I have been attracting people who talk about angels and guides And I feel my spiritual learning has advanced greatly over this past year through all of these incredible guests I've had the pleasure to interview and uncover their magic and share with all of you. As we begin this new year, I wish for all of you to dive deeper into your why and say yes more. There is no better time than the present since that is all we really have anyway. Try to surrender and trust more in that inner voice and do things that might scare you. When you do, your life becomes magical. And like I always say, don't live your life with the what ifs. I am so grateful I have pushed past my fears and started this podcast almost two years ago. Crazy to even think that it's been that long. I have learned so much in these past two years, but if I can tell you the most important thing I am taking away from them is that everything you ever want is on the other side of fear. Stay consistent. I haven't missed one week of this podcast since day one. And after today's podcast, understand that you are more protected and guided than you could ever imagine. Start asking your angels. They want to help you help guide you. I know if I knew this, when I was growing up, my life would have felt more perfect and I would have found peace in times where I felt turmoil or fear. I teach my students in raising confidence in the magic path about the power of the angelic realm and how to access it. I've had some powerful angel stories from the kids and parents and in the families. Now it is now part of our daily practice. And I know not only my student, but my girls have found peace when they are now aware of the angels that surround them and are there waiting for them to ask for their guidance and support. It just adds another layer to our prayers and daily spiritual routine. And it's been magical to say the least. I encourage all of you to bring the angels into your lives and watch the magic unfold every single day of your life. 
So without further ado, please welcome Belinda Womack to the show. Hi, Ashley. Thank you for having me on your podcast today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I have, uh, you know, since I've started this podcast almost two years ago, it was on an inspired thought, nothing more, nothing, just something that said, Ashley, you need to do a podcast. I looked down through 90, some 90, 91 episodes. And I see the growth of my journey and why I was said yes to this podcast and where I am now, as I look back at the last few months, since I've really found you, um, and this angel and the archangels, I've always, you know, believed and trusted in the angels, but I never dove deep until I met you and read your book. And since then I've found other guests to come on that talk about angels, but nothing like you and your story and why I wanted this so bad to share your magic and uncover your magic um, to people is to realize the power of love, where we are in this time of our life, the ascension, the, the angels and guides that are always there and to explain God's energy the way you do is something so beautiful. I could read the first part of your book over and over because it just, it, there's something warmth about that to me. It gives the sense of understanding that we are all one. It is energy. God's energy is love and only love. But what I would love for you to do is go, I kind of explained your story a little bit, but with you to kind of be, begin, because I know when you were a child, you were tapped into this and these angels and the spirit world, but you closed it off and really focused on your studies. You got your degrees in science your master's degrees and really went that route and why. And I also think for people to understand when, when you do listen to that voice and how it happened. So could you just take me to where you feel is relevant to what I would love to share? Well, Ashley, my dear, you are asking me to to definitely go back in time. So what I can share about my uh, childhood experience just very quickly is that, you know, I, I always had a very open, what we would call creative imagination. And then once I got drafted by the angels, I learned that as a child, I was, um, open to the angelic realms and definitely plugged in to heaven and all of the helpers because I needed that help in my childhood. Some people need that help, some people don't need that help, but definitely in, in the craziness that I grew up in, I really needed all of spirit's help. And so, yes, I shut that door down. Um, so the easiest way to explain that is, that you know, in our fabulous human brains, we have a feminine, intuitive, creative side of our brain, and we have a masculine, logical, rational, ego side of our brain. And in order to survive, I had to shut down partially my creative, intuitive, uber sensitive, feminine part of my brain. And so I decided to become at the age of 12, I was going to become an environmental scientist. And that's what I did. And um, then I got two degrees, one in microbiology, and one in environmental science, two masters. And I decided that, you know, I, I started to work in pediatric oncology. So the environmental science part of me is still very much alive. And I'll get to that in a minute. So I um, am now uh, a biologist. I'm working in pediatric oncology, so very left brain. And at this point in my life, I have, this is 30 years ago, I had a visit from Archangel Gabriel while I was doing a stem cell experiment. And I was taken out of the laboratory. You know, this is a vision, but it was so visceral, so real and alive that anyway, I was taken into another dimension and because I could feel the dirt under my feet, you know, mm -hmm. so it was that and smell the air and it was that real. 
And Gabriel said to me telepathically, Belinda, we have new work for you to do. And I said, Gabriel, I'm a scientist. I'm not supposed to believe in angels, but I do. I always have. And so anyway, we had this conversation and Gabriel said, we need your help. You know, it, humanity has forgotten that they're God's divine children. They've forgotten. And I said, well, what do you need me to learn? And Ashley, you may know that I've had to tell this story a few times. <laughs> and, and so the angels, the one angel at this time, Gabriel said, well, we just need you to learn what's in the book to your left. But the book to my left was huge. It was at least, I don't know, the book was open. So it was like four feet open and a foot deep. And But out of the book came in red scarlet fire letters, the word love. I was like, oh, I believe I could learn what love is. You know, I that sounds, you know, that got me. You <laughs> use the word love. And, and so Gabriel said, okay, well, that's what we need you to learn. And then I was back in the lab, back holding my sample. No time had gone by when I looked at my watch. I thought I was gone for at least a day. Mm. And that's how it all began. And so Gabriel was the first angel I met. The second angel was Archangel Michael. And um, that was a little bit scary because my room filled with countless numbers of blue eyes in blue eyes that were in wings, but I didn't see the wings at first. All I saw were millions of blue eyes looking at me. Huh. And then I got the message, I'm Michael. <laughs> so then I met the rest of the, I met the rest of the team and, and um, they are loving and wonderful beings that teach us what we were made out of and where we come from and what school room earth is all about. And they teach us that magic is really divine love, that if we use it as a power, as a creative power, we can definitely change our own reality and help change the global reality for the greater good of all concerned. Why do you think you are the one that can do this? Well, my dear, I totally believe that we can all do this. I want to make that absolutely clear. Why Belinda is a messenger for the 12 archangels, I have no idea. All I can tell you is that I surrendered and I'm very childlike, even though I'm 60, you know, and so I believe that in order to be a clear channel for spirit, you really do need to be a child. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all over the Bible. Not that I'm a, a, a Bible scholar at all, but it does say, you know, God hid, hid these things from the wise and learned, but revealed them to little children. Right. So I just feel that that innocence and you know all about the innocence of children right. and the openness and the heart. And so, well, I do, I do, I have to say, I really do love to love and be love. And my intention is to be a flowing fountain of love. So, but we can all communicate with the 12 archangels and we all do. It's just that sadly, or, you know, I trust that it's all in divine order. The masses of humanity don't realize that we all come from source and divine oneness and that angels are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And there are, they, they are really trying to wake us up and help us at every opportunity that they can possibly help us. Will you explain the number 12 and why there's 12 archangels and the the difference between the archangels and your spirit guides, your oversoul, all those words that people I think sometimes mix up, and I'm getting more clarity from learning and reading your book. Um, but I think people get that kind of don't understand the differences in those. So there are twelve archangels because the number is symbolic. The number actually means 
evolution. So they help us to awaken and move up the spiral of consciousness, right? Our DNA is a spiral. Energy moves in a spiral. So it just means to evolve, to awaken. If you look at the number 12, there are 12 months to the year. Um, there are 12 hours on clock phase. So it's all about moving and going through cycles. And so, you know, 12, and I'm not a history person either, but um, 12 throughout history and certainly spirituality is, you know, it's an important number because it does when you understand, when you love numbers, you know, just that number 12 can help you even just to say 12, right? You'll feel a boost in your energy as it, as it lifts you up. And so I just want to say that are there 12 individual archangels? There, yes and no, there's, there's far beyond 12. There's actually an infinite number because the archangels work with sound and music. So when you need more help, it's just cranking up the volume. So if people ask the question, well, how can Archangel Michael, he's quite the celebrity angel, and he's very much about truth and justice and helping us to find our highest will, making decisions from our hearts. You know, how can he be everybody's guardian angel? Well, that is because when you go all the way back to source, all there is is infinite potential an infinite evolution. So what is the over soul and the soul? The soul is truly our divine self that holds us in love. And the over soul is just that part of our soul that connects us back to the central sun or to divine oneness. All of these terms really were designed to help our human ego, which is the size of a green pea, a green garden pea, <laughs> to understand, right? So the ego is very small and we can't see very much at all. The soul is very huge and it comes from an even bigger source. And we can think of that as our oversoul, the part of us that always stays in heaven. And that oversoul comes back to the central soul which is the heart of a creator or the great universe. But ultimately, it's all about oneness. It's all about energy. And the energy has the vibration when we really want it to work for us. We work with energy at the vibration of undiluted pure love. And that's where the angels, that's what they use to help us. That's what we are created out of. And I do not know if I answered your question. <laughs> you did. Um, so when we go, we come from love. And I was reading the part where, um, is it Lucifer and Michael figure out a way to create the fear? So we have that. So the veil starts to come over. So we now have to, we have this ego that we, I need to understand what you, um, your take and your explanation about Atlantis and all, you know, that I know there's the time is just where it, that all thing I'm really learning. Cause I've had a few guests that we've really kind of dove deep on that. You know, I understand, um, telepathy, like, you know, tell, you know, speaking to my angels and knowing they hear me. Cause I've done past lives where I can tell that my daughter was in one and we were in Atlantis and I knew it was her and I was speaking to her even in dreams, I understand it more because I feel like that's what we're doing in our dreams. Is that a good way of explaining it? Well, let's, let's go to the beginning of your question. So Lucifer Michael is actually one angelic being. Okay. Lucifer means the light, right? the purest light. The name Michael means the will. So Lucifer Michael is about actually that energy in its purest form is about being able to use pure thought. This is what creator does to, to think a new galaxy or to think 
right? Schoolroom earth into being. And then when we add emotion to that, the divine feminine and sound, then we have creation, everything comes to light. So in order to make the ego, the light or pure thought had to have a moment of separation from the will. What does that mean? It says, and that's when the ego was created. The ego was, of course, designed by God, but it is the part of us, because you have to be a human being to have one, that can believe in fear, and it can believe in separation. It can believe that Ashley is Ashley and Belinda is Belinda and there are 12 archangels and, you know, there are this many forests and this many rocks and that, you know, we're all separate. But when you come to the understanding of we're all energy and we all, and that energy is constantly communicating. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they understood in Atlantis. So in Lemuria, it was a test of, of the of duality when fear was introduced into our feelings then we could feel afraid so that's when the old i mean it's ancient but the core fear of abandonment came into the human experience and into the experience of divine oneness trying to help us and learn through us so the fear of abandonment and the fear of survival Am I going to survive my environment? And in Lemuria and all of these different times, which is illusion of of the experiment of, of fear, they all overlap and they're all alive still now. Okay. But in Atlantis, it was a time of when fear was introduced into thought and into energy. So that means we began to think fearful thoughts and to see fear manifest, right? Because creator, and that means human beings because that's where we come from, we manifest with our thoughts. Right. And then we expand that manifestation with our, with our feelings. We, really, we let it come to life with our emotions. So during the time of Atlantis or the teaching time of, of Atlantis, when we learn to work with fear and the power of fear, we, we manifested all kinds of ooby goobies and thought forms that people still love to study. But what's important to understand is that thought is energy. And even if it's the darkest, darkest thought has become the darkest, darkest nightmare of fear. Love transforms it instantly because love is the greatest transforming power. So when you are communicating with your daughter and you are doing that telepathically, that telepathic communication is a way that we still communicate today. We don't, we don't actually need the internet, even though we're very attached to our devices and our Zoom calls. All of this is just because we've gotten a little bit trapped in the density of fear, a little bit more into the um, separation and the illusion of that, but truly we're all telepathic. And so to communicate with spirit, with with our thoughts and with our feelings, that is how the rest of the great universe communicates. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that there's not beautiful music and sound and language and with truth travels through, through that light, which is purest thought. So that is how our intuition works. Where would we be without our intuition? It guides us all the time. And how much fear gets in the way, right? Fear does in, until you learn, which is a journey, until you learn what fear feels like vibrationally. Once you are able to go, uh-oh, I feel kind of squished, 
I feel kind of squished. I'm in the pasta machine. <laughs> That's not going to help me hear my intuition. And once you can feel that and breathe, then that intuitive message, it just, it's on replay all the time. It's not like the angels stop and go, oh, she's not listening to me. Right. You know, I'm going to give up. That's not how they work. Right. That's not how our souls work. But do you think this whole 2020 uh, we're ascending to get back to just pure love? Ashley, you need to take time out of it. You know, you've got to take time out of it. So ascension from the 12 archangels perspective is freedom. What is freedom? Freedom is where you recognize fear for what it is. You recognize fear as an illusion and you say, thank you fear for all you're teaching me and I'm going to choose love. And we fill up with that love and we fill up with that trust. The angels are going to teach a workshop on trust soon. It's a I power. I just read it's a, that. It's yes. an energy. And so when you fill up with that energy of trust and love, then you, in every given moment, you ascend out of fear and what it does and how contracted it is and confusing it is. Ascension is something to experience moment by moment, like taking deep breaths. So will the masses of human beings reach ascension as a one human body in 2022? The answer is unlikely. That's, it's probably not because when every soul is creating every ego, and so some of those egos have agreed, they've signed up. I want the really heavy duty homework on School Room Earth. I want to experience, and, and this is so Archangel Michael's teaching, I want to experience everything I don't want. <laughs> and that's fear, you know, suffering, uh, guilt, shame, poverty, illness. That's what fear is going to give the student of schoolroom earth until that student says, I don't really think I want that homework anymore. Mm -hmm. But every ego needs to have that choice, Ashley. Got it. But what we can do, those of us who have said, fear, I've got your number. <laughs> and you know, if you, if you come knocking at my door, I'm going to give you some love because love transforms fear that helps the one human body that helps the human collective that helps all of school runner. It helps Archangel Gaia, who we have Archangel is our mother earth. Mm -hmm. So that's what we can do is we can be grateful for our own ascending in every moment. And when you talk about vibration and how I, I know, and I, um, you know, believe that just one person can change the energy by their vibration. And because we are all one and in the people that are living in fear, even though they are living in fear, if we are constant in our vibration and living from a loving place that can counteract that fear. It doesn't counteract it. It sends healing into it. Okay. Think of Ashley as a cell, C-E-L-L, -L, in one big giant human body called the human collective. And the cell that is Ashley, her mitochondria are really fired up and they're pulling in love. And it's an incredibly healthy cell. That cell starts to send her energy out to all of the cells that have cancer, out to all of the cells that aren't healthy. So when we have more of those healthy cells in the one human body, that helps the entire collective to wake up and let the love in. Mm -hmm. What is most important 
is for that one healthy cell to focus. It's not about being selfish. It's not about being narcissistic, but it's to focus on her own vibration because that's when she's the most powerful healer that she can be. Mm -hmm. I love that. I teach that to my children and students, how powerful, you know, and it isn't a selfish thing. And I think people, you know, sometimes get that confused. And I, you know, you realize when I, you know, you think of being one, the oneness and the love and all the words you use so beautifully. Um, and to, you know, I'm a mother of two daughters and, you know, watching them grow up. And I know I want to talk about how you were raised with your mom and how ch childhood and children and how close to when you see a baby. And I looked back when I was reading that part of, you know, when children are just so close to that angelic realm and then, you know, the fear starts to come in their life, their limiting beliefs. And, you know, by the time to explain that, cause it was such a different way of explaining. Do you know what I'm talking about? How you explain when a child is born, but because they chose the schoolroom earth, uh, they had to experience fear. So that was part of why the angels aren't away from them, but they make them forget about them. Well, let's, let's just bring it through in this moment. Okay. Ashley, we are the 12 archangels of the central sun. And we say to you that every human being begins as two cells, one from the mother and one from the father. And then the soul comes in and it travels back and forth while the zygote is growing into a fetus. But what is happening during this time is that in the genetics of this human being, they have agreed to take on the subconscious stories that are unfinished, the unfinished homework from the mother and from the father. And this is all agreed to. And that baby that incarnates, that soul that incarnates, also gathers up their own past life stories, things that they haven't tidied up or finished on School Room Earth. Please understand that when you come to School Room Earth, it's not possible to get all the homework done in just one life. And then there is that bigger love and that bigger compassion of the souls that say, I want to take on some homework for others because I know I can get it done. I know I can manage it. So all of this is being awakened within that newborn baby. And so that soul has agreed to the experience of birth, to the experience of those first breaths and first hours outside of the womb, as well as the experiences inside of the womb. And so as that baby grows, yes, there are experiences that the soul has agreed to allow so that that setup for this life, the stage, is created, the memories are created. But once that beautiful being starts on their journey, there is always help, always protection, always redirection. But my dear, even for your two beloved daughters, they agreed to take on lessons. So we thank you for teaching them to use the power of love, yes. 
But the most important lesson you can teach them is forgiveness, real forgiveness. We hope we have answered your question. Oh, have you ever? <laughs> you know, I uh, forgiveness was my next question for you was to go there because I'm in a, uh, I, <laughs> it kind of takes your breath away. I need to come back here. Um, forgiveness. I, I listened to the story of you and your mother and the transformation that you came and I came through with that relationship, which is a connection when I'm a mother I, you know, and then through my mother. So I had all these uh, memories and thoughts that went through my head when I was reading about your story. And when you think of the word karma and um, forgiveness, you know, forgiveness is, I feel like the highest form of love and the way you describe forgiveness. I'm in a, um, an Ascension experience right now with the, with one of my spiritual teachers. And this segment is forgiveness. And this month has been incredible of learning forgiveness and how it is the highest. I, I mean, what I feel right now is like when I read about you talk or listen to you talk about forgiveness and now you ended this, the archangels ended it with forgiveness. I want you to take me to that. I think, is that what you feel like forgiveness is one of the highest forms of love? Well, forgiveness is definitely one of the most fantastic healing powers that we can work with because forgiveness is the energy of transformation. And of course, it's love. It's a quality of love. We can't forgive what we do not understand. And so what can be very helpful, and I'm sure you do this with the children you teach and help, is to help them to see the other perspective. You see, human beings are always doing the very best they can do. And certainly when Belinda was a child and in the womb, that's when my earliest memories are, I didn't understand that my mother was doing the very best job she could do. I didn't understand that I had chosen her. What I knew was I couldn't save her. My mother is in heaven now, but she was a, um, an alcoholic. And so they're brilliant. But there were lots of situations that I really tried to save my mom. And I wasn't allowed to do that. But what it taught me, Ashley, to, to have the mother that I, that I chose and she chose me, was the power of unconditional love. I learned that early, early, early on. And the, that's what I could give my mom, even if I needed to do it from a distance, because I, I would, my energy kind of got on her nerves. And so she needed lots of space. And, and I understand that now. Mm -hmm. What I could give her was unconditional love. And now that she's in heaven, she has really helped me to see so many things, to see her genetics and her mother's genetics and her father's genetics and all of these stories of the ancestors and of her own past life stories that I took on into my own being. And so we come back to that wonderful energy that the angels love to work with. Violet fire, which is the energy of the crown chakra. Mm -hmm. It's made of the will chakra and the root chakra. It's energy of love. But forgiveness comes in a color. It comes in a color. So it makes it much easier for us. Oh, we can put it in violet fire and we can thank whatever the memory is or the story. And we, we, you can actually feel a visceral release from your being, from your, from your body. And so... Forgiveness is our way free. Forgiveness is definitely the doorway to ascension. And we get so indoctrinated 
hold on to the past. Hold on to those resentments and everything you feel guilty about. Oh my goodness. But the truth is, is violet fire, that color, beautiful, any shade of purple or violet, even with your intention to forgive, it will take that guilt and turn it into love. Who needs guilt? Right. Who needs shame? Who needs self-punishment and unworthiness? Are these things, do they really make us better human beings? What the 12 archangels say is they only pull you down into fear and they only keep you stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. If you're stuck in the past, you don't have room to breathe and to let heaven flow in. So yes, we all love the power of forgiveness. It's a fantastic and amazing tool for healing the human being. Physical, mental, emotional, all of it. Oh, um, on to the reason we chose, what is your take on why we chose to be here at this time? Why we chose to be on this schoolroom earth? Are we going to, have we, do we ever get to a place where we've learned everything we've learned and we live in neutral, uh, you know, in neutral life and, you know, the fear doesn't even part you know, participate in our being anymore. And we just decide to stay um, in heaven with our angels and the spirit guides or be the one to be a spirit guide to someone else. Why would you want to stay in heaven if you figured out that love is the greatest power? When you want to sign up and come back to schoolroom earth and sure you have to remember you have to live the experience of love you got to do it all over again but wouldn't it be wonderful isn't it exciting to come back and say ah I know the secret there's no secret let's choose love <laughs> watch it it's this incredible expansive joyful happy childhood energy. Wouldn't you want to share that? Isn't that why Ashley is back? <laughs> yes. And do, I guess sometimes I, you know, I've heard people say, I think this is my last time on this earth, or, um, you know, I feel like I've, you know, done everything I can. I'm going to uh, you know, I have no more lessons to learn. I'm thinking, and I, I always am always knowing I have lessons to learn that I just think it's never ending. Um, but when you have these archangels and we know we're so, uh, you know, guided and protected and they're just there waiting for you to ask. And I always, am, you know, sharing that with my friends and children. And do you, see Belinda just continually coming back and just you're, uh, are you going to be at a higher vibration every lifetime you come back? Could it sometimes be a lower vibration? I don't know. How do you view that? My dear, we are all one. And so the one soul, the central soul can generate an infinite number of personalities, an infinite number of egos to come to school remember. So right now you are Ashley and I am Belinda, but that does not mean that our souls, which come from the central sun, are not living through multiple egos. It helps to come back, even though it's hard for the ego to understand that everyone else on schoolroom earth is myself. So the personality of Ashley may feel that you are at a place of completion. And so you want to return home and help from that vantage point, but you can. You can help without, as an angelic being, without incarnating on the earth. What the angels say is that at this moment in the story of schoolroom earth that many loving giving generous 
souls agreed to create personalities that were going to wake up and return at this time to help facilitate a, a faster wake up, a faster healing. So we often recognize one another as you know when we when we come together. What's important to know to share with with your audience and with the children is everyone has a choice. You're not made to come back. You want you want your ego to know you don't you don't have to come back to the school of hard knocks if you don't want to. But what is amazing believe it or not, is so many, many egos, when they return home to heaven and they reconnect with their souls and the, the nature spirit makes a new body for you, it's like walking off of one movie set and it's like, oh, I'm out of that movie now. And you remember everything and you remember the dream of Schoolroom Earth and why you wanted to go there it's amazing that actually most most let me return i have unfinished work to do i want to get it right this time this time i'm not going to fall asleep right. this time i'm going to say no to drugs and alcohol which are just fear's way of putting you to sleep this time I'm going to go back there and I'm not going to take my life. I'm going to, I'm going to transform it and I'm not going to give up. It's all choice. It really is all choice. Now, Ashley in heaven. Are you still Ashley? There's a lot of, lot of your divine personality of your higher self in the Ashley that's on the earth. So each time you incarnate on Schoolroom Earth, whether you're male or female, you're pretty much you. That's not true for everybody. So just know that when you cross over, return home to heaven, step out of this movie. If you wanna take a vacation, you certainly can. If you wanna stay there or return to your home star system, you will have the opportunity to do that. And if you want to serve and come back, you can do that too. When you say a lot of people, what was different about why am I Ashley in heaven and some people aren't? Why don't you answer that question? <laughs> why am I Ashley? What do you love about Ashley? That I am love? That's a very good answer. You answered your question. Okay. I am love. And some people don't see themselves as love. Is that? Their ego may, their ego may want to see that, but to be love is something that you live that you breathe, that you speak, that you teach, that you walk, that you dance. And some are just not there yet. They haven't reached that level of self-forgiveness. Hmm. Um, I can, I feel that. When, could you have the uh, channel a message with the angels as we close? Um, today um maybe they have a message for me or whatever they want to uh, tell us okay let's see we begin with ashley we are grateful that you choose to be a loving being every moment of every hour, even when your ego doubts this, the energy that you radiate is love 
and the desire for this love to grow and to expand. And what we say to parents is just honor that you have much to learn from your children. You see, children choose their parents because they have something to teach them. And sometimes the parents may not learn what their children are teaching them until they return to heaven, but they will learn what their children are trying to teach them. And parents, you may see yourselves as the teachers of your children. We say that you can help hold the vibration so that your children can learn. You can encourage them to want to know the truth, to want to be in the truth. Even if the people around them can't handle the truth at the highest vibration of love. Parents, you can encourage your children to keep their creative imagination alive. For they do see into the realms of heaven. Let them love their angels. And if they begin to forget, try not to judge them for this. Just support them wherever they are. For there will come a point when they say, Mom, I'm 30 now or I'm 40, tell me about this angel stuff. Tell me about divine oneness. I'm ready to hear it now. And as you teach them, you will learn it all again for yourself. We thank you for teaching and holding forgiveness oneness, and the power of love. And we are here as co-parents for your inner children. Your souls are truly your true parents. But we are here as aunts and uncles helping, holding the force of love so that you remember love is the power that you need to live the life that brings you joy and brings you freedom. We thank you. We thank you for your willingness. And we are here loving you. Loving you. Oh, Belinda. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, angels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. 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 It, it, it takes me to somewhere. Do you remember when you talk, when you channel the angels, do you remember what comes through you? I remember the feeling. I remember some of the words and I remember what they asked for me to remember. Hmm. But um, so I can tell you that they spoke to parents Yes. Yes. So, um, no, I just, you that, know, I, you what? That I understand that objective. Um, you know, I, I have such a desire to 
you know, give these tools to children. And I saw in a past life regression that I was always a teacher. And when you described going from one movie to the next and to the next, it was always a teacher. And when I found this passion two years ago, besides being a mother with the passion of teaching my children, but teaching others, and now parents that have come to me, I see through, I see where the passion comes from. And it's so beautiful to see those movies play and understand who, what my soul is passionate about, I guess. Is that, (laughs) that, you know what I mean? What your soul is here to do and here to share. Right. But it took 50 years to, (laughs) you know, to get to that place. And I, I always tell people there's no time. It's just, I've always had that in me. It often takes 50 years, Ashley. It does. Well, it's, it's like this, the human being, they said this, you know, even if you're an ancient soul, you want to bring the experience of love, the choice of love back into every thought and feeling and action of your life. And that can take time. Mm-hmm. It, it can it can take time. So all of your efforts to come to where you are now, all of that was in perfect divine order and totally orchestrated because your real mission, you have a lot of missions, but one of them they say is to teach parents their children are the teachers. Mm-hmm. Learn from them. They're going to push your buttons. They are going to be mirrors back to you of yourself that you cannot see, aspects of yourself that you can't see. And they're really going to push your control buttons to show you you don't have any. (laughs) Even though the parent part of you says, this is a child and I'm supposed to be in control. If you can let that go, and really listen to the wisdom of your children and let them tell you how to manage them. And you encourage them to manage themselves, then you're way far ahead. Hmm. And the angels are very grateful to you for your, that you surrendered to the work that you incarnated to do. It takes a lot of surrender. Mm -hmm. I love that word too. I've always found magic when I've surrendered and trusted and going on to this, the end of this episode, I know you're getting ready to start. I was just reading an email that you sent out about your um, class on trust, or we explain to people what you're working on now. I know you're, you have a book in order. You're creating another book, your website, all that. So my website is belindawomack.com. That's my uh, kind of main site. And my first book is called Lessons from the 12 Archangels, Divine Intervention in Daily Life. The new book is in manuscript form. It's with my agent. We are not sure what the, um, you know, it's not, it's not to the publisher yet. So can't, can't announce the title. But what the angels have had me do is in rereading the new manuscript, I noticed, wow, they use the word trust a lot in this manuscript. And uh, so I just noticed that, of course, they made me notice that. And then I started, wow, trust is, it's beyond a word. It's a, it's an energy. So just like forgiveness is an incredible power. What they have been teaching me is that trust is a phenomenal power. So um, we're going to teach, which means Belinda's going to channel. On February 6th, I will um, channel a course on trust and working with the power, practicing. I mean, everything the angels teach through me is experiential. They, they really want you to live it so that then you've got it. 
if it's just, you know, a lecture right. you leave behind. So they want you to really live it and use it and practice it. So, and then that will be an audio course that is available um, with the rest of my courses, the angels courses, because their, their material doesn't grow old. So they've, right. they've taught me, don't throw that MP3 away. That's important. <laughs> it will always be available. The, I was listening to one uh, episode in 2020 when someone was asking you about people's fear of making money in, you know, now, you know, the pandemic, you know, closed down all these businesses and how the angels, how you channeled courses on wealth and creating money and how you didn't know why you were creating or channeling this and you were getting ready for this 2020 and you didn't even know. Mm -hmm. That's what angels will do, but what they're going to um, teach you, anyone is keep that creative spirit flowing, do what make what you feel passionate about that helps you to receive whether you're going to receive income directly through that creative passion, which is often what happens or through other faucets or doorways. It helps to be creative is what really helps the universe to send you what you need. So ask, say, thank you that I am receiving. Those words are very powerful and let go of what doesn't work for you anymore. Gotta, you gotta let it go to let something new come in. And that's very much the story of the pandemic. Right. So many people have, you know, have learned, wow, I was really holding on to that for security and it was making me miserable. So now I'm gonna try something different. Right, the control. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I, I, in this whole two years of this experience, I, you know, I'm definitely a trust and know that it's perfect. And every day live in that moment of what is the, what are my signs? What is the message that I, what is guiding me and living in that high vibration and not letting the, you know, the fear and the control and all these, you know, whatever people want to experience affect me, right? Be neutral, neutrality, love, is helpful. Mm -hmm. you know, not be triggered by those things. And I pushed past this hour and I appreciate you, Belinda. This was like a, a dream um, interview for me. I want you to know how much I honor that your time, you, how you've changed my life, how you've changed my mom's life. I gave her your book and she's, you know, just that one person. I, you know, I'm just grateful. Thank you. Well, we thank you, all 12 Archangels and Belinda. We thank you. And we wish you the greatest success in all that you are here to do and in what makes you happy as you continue to uncover your magic all of your days, little Ashley. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>